Hi, and welcome to this demonstration of our cloud delivery framework and how we use it to help customers stitch together tools like ServiceNow with Azure and other technologies in their organization. In this demonstration, we're going to go through a look at a ServiceNow portal and what it means to truly make a cloud operations portal for your organization, what that means, what it would look like when you're connecting to say Azure or other cloud providers, what it might mean from a tagging and business strategy for knowing about the assets that you're provisioning in your environment and how you go about operating and managing it from then on. We'll begin this demonstration by jumping straight over to the ServiceNow portal. All right, and now we're in the ServiceNow portal, and this is the interface you may be familiar with if you're familiar with ServiceNow. But what we've done is we've actually customized using the ServiceNow portal technology something on top of this that makes it much easier for cloud operators to utilize. Let's take a look at that portal, and here it is. And as you can see, a little bit different. We've worked with our customers to try and figure out what are the six major areas, what are the things we need to put on screen that make it very easy and you know relevant to the things that you do day to day when you're trying to provision services and operate your cloud and, and do other things you know on top of your cloud services. Well, it begins with a portal and a, a simple you know bar that says need help finding a request. You know you can simply type in what you want there as one mechanism. But in addition, we've got things like cloud provisioning cloud operations, cloud reporting. These three make up the fundamental base for everything. You know, a lot of times IT says, hey, we get a lot of requests for services that we want to standardize and make available. That's where cloud provisioning comes in. How do I then operate my environment? What does the knock do when we get tickets and things in? That's what we focus on with cloud operations. And cloud reporting, you know, is something that we focus on a lot these days is around cost management, security, optimization of the environment as well. And those are skills that are, you know, constantly being evolved in the industry right now and new sort of roles in the cloud teams, you know, focus heavily on looking at those reports. Underneath all of that, there's some additional services that we thought were relevant as well. Uh, over and over again, we've seen a need for a rise in DevOps services as cultures change and embrace DevOps in you know, enterprise organizations. But with that came a request for how do I onboard people to DevOps services? How do I engage if I've got a specific DevOps group that helps with tooling, say? How, how do we engage that team to kind of get onboarded to, say, the new CI, CD tool set we have? So that led a rise to kind of DevOps services and tickets to that team or multiple teams in many cases with DevOps that could help service those requests. Requests for new service were a big thing as well. You'll see as we do a demonstration of cloud provisioning, it's great that there's a lot of standard stacks there, but one of the biggest things that came from feedback with customers was, how do I create a request for a new request? Essentially, how do I get new things added to the portal, and how do I have a way of prioritizing that within my cloud team? And that's what request for new service is all about. And smart onboarding goes without saying, how do I just onboard people to my cloud and you know give them access to the services they want? I have to have workflows for that as well. But to dive in a little deeper, we'll hit on cloud provisioning first of all. And in cloud provisioning, you can see in this case, we've got three endpoints available. We have VMware, Azure, and AWS. And we have different services available in each of those. You know, traditionally on-premises, it's going to be a lot of IaaS services, you know, a lot of VM builds, things like that. When we move into Azure and AWS, we'll start to see richer services made available. Uh, we might have some PaaS stacks in there. We might have still some IaaS services in there, uh, but plenty more options available to you. We might deploy entire applications or Docker container infrastructure as well. And so the purpose of this is to make sure that you know, you're not necessarily going to have the same services from every cloud provider available, that you know the thought process around, hey, I want to abstract the clouds and create a service that can run on any of them. Might be some use cases for that, but typically not the major one. The major use cases are what can I use from my cloud provider that's really going to be meaningful and beneficial to my business. And that's where we primarily focus these services. Moving on, let's go into the Azure section and take a look at something that's very common today. A lot of Red Hat Linux on Azure nowadays. And what would just a typical IaaS service request look like? So if we look through something like Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.3 on Azure, if we scroll down, the first thing we do is we add a very abbreviated section for the service offering details. What is the service going to get me? You can put all different things in here, you know, depending on how much information you want to give to the user, but keep this part very short. You know, we want them to get through the request very quickly, make it very concise, easy to read, and if they want more information, they can go over to the knowledge base. So if you click the knowledge base link, 
This takes them into further details around the specific Azure architecture available, details around the service, and potentially you can include some information from, say, Microsoft documentation, as we've done here, to help give further information around the stack. In many cases, a lot of these templates are taken from the Microsoft Reference Quick Start templates and added to ServiceNow so that they can be utilized. But if we go back to the catalog request and scroll down, the first thing you'll notice is we have a number of variables. We consider this first section of variables, which here we've called cloud resource provisioning variables, uh, things around the business, right? Things that we need to know about the service that's getting provisioned. So maybe we have a lease time, maybe it's assigned to a specific group, maybe it's got a specific business service we want to track against this. One of the services we use as an example to head is our bag management service. This is simulated after an airline that maybe wants to move bags around or check in a passenger, check in their bags, things like that. In addition, there might be things like size of the virtual resource, the business purpose, is it used for development, is it production, is it staging, what's the project it might be used for, does it contain any sensitive data, things like that. Once we get through the business information, the next thing to do is look at the Azure template provisioning variables. So these actually come directly from the ARM template and we can decide do we want to expose these to the user? Do we not want to expose them? You know, do we want to even give them the option of kind of putting in their own resource group name? Uh, or do we want to just give them a drop down to select resource groups? Do we want to you know, allow them to choose the subscription? Uh, or do we want to box them in based on the rules that we've created for them? In addition, we've got some final template parameters as well. Things around you know, the OS version, DNS label, admin password, username. Those are things also you can decide. Maybe you don't expose, maybe you have defaults that get applied, maybe your template goes and creates a username in Key Vault in Azure and then you know, hides all that you know, from the user if needed. Uh, but with that, once you're ready, you just go ahead and click Submit and that will fire off that request and begin building that for you. You get your thank you for submitting the request click OK, and you can then view the status of all of your requests. If we go into one of these, we can take the last one we just created. And we can see all the details of everything we requested for that service. Now with that request submitted, I can head over to Microsoft Azure and take a look at what provisioned. I'll scroll down. I will see that I have a resource group created, demo 17. Go in there and we can see our service is deployed. It's our Linux VM with all the associated Azure objects. But one of the key things is tagging. How do I make sure that everything passed across? And what we do is all that business information that we talked about in ServiceNow is all passed across to Microsoft Azure at time of build. And if we decided to build that same service on VMware, we can do the exact same thing. So we keep this unified set of tags across all of our cloud targets. Now moving back to the operations portal, you know, it's great that we can provision, but what do we do around those operating and reporting capabilities? And let's go into reporting first of all. One of the key things that we have here is things like My Virtual Asset. And My Virtual Asset is just a great way if you, I mean, think about the viewpoints that you have. You have the person who maybe built the asset, they wanna know about their assets. You have your teams that maybe share assets. And think about your assets across things like VMware, uh, Amazon, Azure, you know, getting that global view around all of your cloud providers. Going back for a second, let's also take a look at one of the hottest topics, which is cost and usage. If we select cost and usage, this can actually take us to a third party service. In our case, we have a head copilot for Azure and AWS. And if we select cost and inventory management, this takes us directly into a head copilot. And here we can go ahead and select from a variety of dashboards, or perhaps we want to drill into a specific account. And we'll go into our demo account first of all. And straight away here, you can see we're in an AWS account right now. You can see security issues, cost issues, availability, usage, as well as data being rolled up by AWS Trusted Advisor. In addition, we could go over to our Azure accounts as well, select our demo account for Azure, and we will get similar information, best practices, reporting, cost information, along with data being rolled up from Azure Advisor and Azure Security Center. In addition, we can also choose from a series of dashboards that we've created. And these can be tailored to all the different use cases. Perhaps you have application specific dashboards or dashboards around the whole environment itself. And these can be refreshed live. You can see it's going ahead, it's pulling that data live from the target cloud provider, 
refreshing all these widgets so we have the most up-to-date information. With that said, we'll end this demonstration here, but hopefully that gives you a good insight into our viewpoint of a successful deployment of a cloud operations portal and some of the things you need to be looking at to adequately manage your cloud environment, and in particular, how you can leverage ServiceNow, advance it using the service portal technology and the integrations available to you with the public cloud providers to truly offer your customers of IT a rich experience.